In today's tutorial, we'll be going over a surprisingly overlooked aspect of UEFN, foliage mode. I'm going to talk about all the different things like how to use it, all the different things you can use, and also making your own custom foliage assets, setting up your materials for trees with leaves and that, that would blow in the wind, and also have randomized colors to have your own ginormous forest with over 6,000 trees. And the beauty of all of this is that it takes up almost no memory. So let's get right to it. If you ever try to make something like this, like a, like a big island with a bunch of trees and whatever, you probably ran into the issue where you run out of memory or something like that because you have too many trees and each tree takes up a bunch of memory. Well, in foliage mode, you don't need to worry about that because what it does, it uses instances and meshes that you can place around and you can have thousands of trees and bushes and rocks without taking up at, like barely as much memory as you normally would. Okay, first things first, actually use foliage mode, you need a landscape. So go, in the go up here, go into landscape. And then we're just gonna make. I don't really care about it. I'm just gonna make a landscape. The thing is, you don't actually need a landscape to do this, but um, I'm gonna use a landscape because it makes it easier. I'm just gonna make a few hills. Okay, now here is my beautiful little valley. Now, how to actually use foliage mode? Well, if you go up here, you're gonna notice that right under landscape, there's another one called foliage. If you go to the foliage mode, you'll see this, okay? And you're probably wondering, what the hell is all this? So, so to actually add foliage the meshes that you're gonna use in this mode, what you need to do is you need to add in custom meshes by pressing plus foliage. Create a new asset called a static mesh foliage. This will create something in your uh, thing. So we're gonna call this a uh, tree. So we now have a thing right here called tree. If you go actually into it in our content browser, you'll see see you can add a mesh to it you also have all these different settings in here too there's a lot of customizability if you want one of the major things you gotta you, gotta, you should probably do is go down here and if it's like a tree or something you usually want collision and, and it defaults to no collision like so this grass here would have no collision but you probably want collision so if you want to actually have collision you want to go down to block all you'll be blocking everything in this mesh, uh, this will be your custom foliage. Okay, what you can do, there's some preset trees or you can import your own. We're just gonna do presets for now. I'm gonna talk about importing trees later, but I'm gonna switch up oak. And when you look at that, we got an oak tree. You save this. As you can see, we now have a little little tree right here. This is, this, is, this is the thing we dragged in earlier and changed the mesh out. So if you click this little like check mark, we're gonna have it selected. See all the settings that were in that are now in here. Now you're gonna notice there's a little brush. Uh, if you click this, you're gonna realize, oh, look at that. We now have some trees. And as you can see, you can just do everything. If we just drag it around, look, we now have hundreds of trees. Now what you can also do, you can add another one. I like a new one. I'm going to call this a rock. Grab a rock. A boulder. Save that. Go out of it. And now we have a boulder. Now we can put this boulder. So I'll just put it around and you can see these little boulders that will spawn. And now we can populate our world with a bunch of boulders. Also, you're seeing me, I'm spawning trees because I have both of them selected. But if you only wanted to use boulders, you can turn this off and then you can just do boulders. Or if you wanted to see trees, you can turn on trees only and you can only do trees. Or you can turn them both on and then you can do boulders and trees. So look, we are, we've are we we've placed 1,350 trees in like, uh, like what, like two seconds? If you want, okay, if you wanted to remove a bunch of trees, uh, you can do a race up here and then you just, you know, erase it. Now, okay, so you gotta be careful with how many trees or plaques you're placing because sometimes you can place like, you know, 100,000 trees at once and don't go crazy with it, okay? Because if your computer's lower end, it will explode. Okay, I'm not kidding. So up here, if you go back into paint mode, uh, make sure your systems can be in a race mode and you're like, oh, why is it not painting? Uh, I just wanna go back into paint mode. Uh, in this, uh, you can, you know, brush again if you want. A little tip if you, if you want to get rid of something that you just press down, uh, just press just control Z and look at that, it's all gone. What you can also do is up here in brush size, you can change the size of the brush. So if you want it to be smaller and you can like place them more like in smaller areas. Okay, now paint density is, this is a multiplier on this, the density KUU. So right now it's 100 per, and this is doing 0.1. So what's 100 times 0.1? That's one, okay? So we're only getting one tree per thousand by thousand by doing this. Now this, if I did this, that'd be 10 trees per thousand by thousand. And obviously that would be a lot of trees. <laughs> Look, oh my God. Okay, um, I'm lagging. Uh, if this happens, question throw Z. And down here um, in single instance mode, what you can do is you can do all selected, which basically means everything that you have selected down here. Uh, you'll place single instances of them. So if you don't want to place like, you know, a thousand trees at once, you can place one tree at once if you wanted to, if that's more your style. But what you can also do is in these filters down here, you can change it. So maybe if you didn't want to place it on static meshes. So down here, I can place a tree on this, but let's say if I didn't want to do that, 
I can turn that off and now I can't place it on here and I can only place it on the landscape or vice versa. So if you want to only place it on a static mesh, you can do it on a static mesh, but not on a thing. And we can also do is turn off this foliage thing because sometimes if you're going crazy with like little plants, they can get stuck up in the tops of trees by accident. So if you turn this off, you won't run into that issue. Okay, now another thing you can do is radius. And radius basically means the the distance between uh, foliage instances, which are these, you know, so this is a tree. So as you can see, there is quite a lot here because the radius is zero and the density is quite high. So if I were to increase this, if I make this about 2000, as you can see, oh wow, look at that. Now the trees will only place about 2000 away from each other. Now another thing you do is scaling. You see how these, all these trees are the same size? Let's say if I wanted them to be like slightly different sizes, like you would normally do it, so that there's a bit more variety. So what you can do is in scaling, you can, okay, so there's three different options for scaling, uniform, uniform, free, and then lock, and you can do whatever, which one you want to lock. So uniform basically does the same, same scale for every single access so the top will set width and the length and then free makes it so you can change it individually and then lock xy would mean they have to be like you know they'll just they'll just buy it by the same so yeah so we'll just do uniform for now because it's easiest i will do max 1.3 and, and maybe 1.9 and as you can see as i place these you're gonna notice that they're they're getting somewhere taller than others so this one's slightly smaller this one's a bit bigger that one's pretty small that one's a bit bigger so it'll add some more uh you know randomization to your to your foliage which is always very nice now z offset can be very useful sometimes if you're placing a foliage and it's sticking off the ground you do you can make it the offset a bit smaller so you put it down to like be 80 if you wanted to and now if i were to place it you're gonna see that they're kind of more in the ground now so this is at a thousand so as you can see the tree is just in the ground now this is the opposite so it's um it's actually higher than it would be so you can make it so it's like goes up off the ground slightly more so line to normal basically means as you can see this tree over here it's kind of bent to the side if you turn this off trees will just always face up if you didn't want them to be bent also down here, there's a random yaw. I don't know what this is. Uh, when you place a tree, you're gonna see that it's kind of hard to see, but they're kind of rotated differently. If I do, if I turn this off, you're gonna see that all the trees are rotated the exact same. That'll make it so that this is they rotate randomly on their yaws. Random pitch angle is a number you can change. So if you wanted to have like slightly different pitches, so this will make it so they're like leaning sideways a little bit sometimes. As you can see, this one's like leaning sideways a bit. If you make it too high, they'll start going in the ground. So this might be helpful for rocks if you want some rock that'll be like less like you know uniform now another thing you do is you can go into select mode and you can actually move the trees if you did not like where it was which is very helpful you can also press all to select all the foliage if you want to you can also do select mode uh let's say if you didn't like this tree being in the ground for some reason uh what you do is you select it and then you can press remove and what you look at that you remove them so let's say if you placed a bunch of trees quick way to get rid of all of them is to Remember, select all and then press remove and they're all gone. And another very useful option down here is at the very bottom is include in HLOD. You can turn this off or on if you want. So let's say if you had HLD is on. This is useful for trees because you want to see trees from far away, but you don't want to see like maybe like a tiny little rock like right here or something. So and again, if you are going to do something like tiny little grass or rocks or tiny like these bushes or something if you want, make sure to turn off um, collision. So you want to go into no collision if you want to. Okay, so that's pretty much all the basics, but I'm going to show you how to make your own custom foliage asset. And then also I'm going to show you how to randomize the leaf color. So you can have like a bunch of different colored trees, which always looks nice. Okay, so if you go back in the foliage mode, so in foliage mode, you want to click plus foliage and make a new foliage. I'm going to add my own tree, which will be uh, a birch tree. I'll make a new folder because I have the asset for the birch tree that I'm going to import right now. Now, the thing is here is that um, if you want to import Fortnite meshes, use Fortnite porting, okay? Put them in the blender, then export them as an FBX, and then you get this. So, or you can get like your own custom, you can get, you can get another tree from like uh, online and anything, the, the Unreal Marketplace or Fab or something. You, just gotta, you can use custom trees, but you can't use Fortnite props, but you can get Fortnite props from Fortnite porting and use them as custom trees. Does that make sense? So I dry this out, you're going to see there's no textures and these leaves kind of look terrible. <laughs> so how do we fix this? So if you want to go, we'll do the, we'll do the trunk first because the trunk's easier. Delete this, go into, go into cotton drawer and then grab your three uh, materials that usually are either your base color, your, your normal and your specular maps. And if you bring these all out, you want to put RGB normal into base color. You want to put your normal into normal you want to put green of specular into metallic, red into specular, and then B into roughness. And that, there we go. That was pretty easy. 
Now the leaves are a bit different, so I'm gonna try to make leaves. So if you wanna make a custom one, if you wanna make a custom leaf, what you're gonna need to make a mask. It's very simple, don't worry, okay? So you wanna, you know, put this like usual into base color. You wanna put uh, your mask. You wanna put it into opacity mask. So you're gonna see our opacity mask is blanked out. So how do we get this into there? Click onto this, go into here, go into blend mode, go into mask. And now you're, now you're blending into mask. So you wanna put RGB into opacity mask. And then as you can see, we now have this. Now, if we go into here, this is our normal. So like earlier, we put them at the normal. And would you look at that? We now have birch leaves. And now you're going to see that you, there's a bottom side to them. So to fix that, go to here, switch up two-sided and then click that on. Or just like, you know, scroll down to switch to where you find it in here. Save that. And now we now have a bottom to all our leaves. So what you want to do to make the wind for the leaf, go into cotton drawer, so go into epic, sort of wind. Now would you look at that simple grass wind, drag that in. Now we have this little new node. Then you want to plug this into world position offset. As you can see, uh, we're going to have a little, a bit of a problem. So add a few of these, put into here, down into there. This is going to be our wind intensity. So how intense do you want it? I'll just do one. A wind weight, one, and then our additional, whatever, it's one. <laughs> As you can see, uh, our trees are now a bit windy. <laughs> so let's try to make them a bit less windy. I just want a cool, nice little cool breeze. So it will make these one. Oh, wait, there's actually another. I, can I didn't even see that. There's a, there's a wind speed. So we can make that maybe one as well. So as you can see, our, our, our trees now have wind. It's nice. Very nice. Now, um, to make this into a foliage, what we need to do is we need to go back into our our, uh, our little birch thing. And like the other ones, we want to add a mesh that's going to be the birch. Save that. So now we can paint it around. Uh, we, it works, but there's a big issue. Uh, there's no textures on any of these instance meshes. Now to fix this, you need to go into your, your material, click on whatever, and then you want to search up instance. And as you can see right here in usage, you want to click this on and save that and apply it. Go into your under material and do the exact same thing. There we go. Save that and apply it. And then as you can see, our birch trees now have textures for their instances. Now you're probably going to lose another problem. The, the leaves kind of look a bit off, okay? So I'm going to show you now how to make per instance different colors on leaves. So what you can do now, okay? In up here, in our leaf, our leaf, leaf material, you want to add something called a per instance random. There we go. Now this is our per instance random. You then want to add a lerp, and right here, lerp three color. You want to add this, plug this into alpha. Then what you want to do is hold three and press the left button on your mouse. And I'll create a constant three and you want to make three of these. And these will be the colors of the leaves. Here's all our colors for autumn leaves. You want to put that into A, put this into B, and then put this into C. And then with this little leaf color here, you want to hold M on your keyboard and then press the left mouse button. And then you get a multiply node. Plug this into B, then plug this into A, then plug this into base color. And now you're going to see that we now have uh, custom, custom leaf colors, but it's randomized. So we have all three as in different, different trees. That's really cool, right? Oh wow, look at that. And now if we just you know add trees everywhere, oh would you look at that? We now have uh an, we have a birch forest with over six thousand seven hundred and forty trees. <laughs> So yeah, one last thing we need to make sure is correct is the collision of all these trees. What you need to do is go in Cotton Browser, your, where your static mesh is. And as you can see, we're now in the little thing with our static mesh. Now what you want to do is you want to go into collision. Um, if, if, you, if there is collision, you can remove it. Um, if let's say the collision is kind of bugged, uh, or the static mesh is automatic, generated collision is bad or something. Put that off. Basically, uh, the easiest way to do it is just add a box simplify collision. Let's get this little box right here now. Just make it so the, the collision just fits the mesh however you like it. I mean, that will do. If you're in a rush, this will do. But um, if you want to make it more accurate, you can if you want. There we go. There's some collision for that little, like, birch tree. Now, with the collision done, uh, we're done. So let's check this out in game. And oh my god, look at all of these trees. Now, here's 6,000 trees, but with only 3,000 memory cost. And that 3,000 is most likely just from the landscape and the two spawners. So this is pretty, pretty powerful. So foliage mode is very underutilized in UEFN. So use it and you can do stuff like this. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, uh, use my code and watch all of these videos if you want more of my content. So on this beautiful sunset, that's about it. See you around.